Concerning the radiological findings and the X-ray study, it's very important to notice that the X-ray or radiological signs does not appear until the second and third uh, week uh, after the infection. So uh, we should not. Uh, the idea, the important idea, is that we should not wait until the X-ray findings appear to to to, to uh, uh, begin the treatment of osteomyelitis or to diagnose the osteomyelitis. Uh, the, usually, the um, radiological findings are either periosteal reaction, as we have said previously in the previous slide, and the uh, porotic appearance of, uh, of bones and what we call it patchy rarefaction, and the, uh, because of the hyperema that happens in the uh, in the bone, and we can see see that on this slide, on this uh, radio uh, radiograph, we see here the uh, local osteoporosis and the periosteal reaction that is a thin uh, density uh, or condensation of the periosteum on the cortex. Uh, the use of echography is useful because it's non-invasive technique, it's uh, non, not radiological uh, instrument, uh, does not use the X-ray, and uh, it's easy to use. Uh, we can recognize the collection of pus or a collection of the hematoma or the fluids uh, outside the bone. Uh, so we can see the collection of, uh, of uh, fluid. It's not very... Um, uh, uh, it's not very precise to decide if this collection is a pus or not, or it's uh, only hematoma. It can guide us that it's not clear fluid, but it, uh, it does not ensure uh, that um, uh, this uh, collection is blood or is uh, pus. And it, ca it can guide us to, have, to make an accurate puncture from the site of collection. Radionuclide scanning or bone scan, usually it's done. Uh, with, the, with the use of technetium 99M. Uh, this uh, this uh, way of investigation or the use of uh, technetium, it's a very sensitive way, but it's not specific because it does not uh, uh, correlate it or it's, uh, it, does not, it does not indicate um, uh, directly to the infection. It, it indicates if it's positive, that is, we have um, uh, a warm area with uh, increased activity in perfusion and bone phase, we can, we can uh, diagnose that there's something uh, not usual in this area, but it's not surely, it's not for sure it's, uh, uh, it's an infection. It may be a fracture or tumor or whatever. So to increase the sensitivity of the bone scan, we should use another way. Um, uh, for example, the use of leukocyte labeled uh, by indium or gallium citrate. Citrate, which can be more uh, make it more accurate and more specific for the infection. The use of MRI in uh, diagnosing osteomyelitis is not um, uh, is not the uh, the investigation of choice. The first investigation tool of choice because it's expensive, but it's very important to diagnose, to, to differentiate the, the infection or osteomyelitis from other bone lesion, uh, lesions as tumors and soft tissue infections. It can differentiate the presence of the site and the presence of uh, infection in the soft, in soft tissue. So it's very important for the differential diagnosis and when we, are, when we have doubtful diagnosis. But uh, usually we do not uh, routinely recommend this uh, investigation tool. Laboratory investigations is very, very important. And the, uh, the keystone in the laboratory investigations is the uh, identification of the germ, either by puncture or the smear that is taken from the site of infection and the site of collection of pus, or by uh, blood, uh, blood culture. Uh, the, w when we have a collection of fluids, and it's uh, uh, doubted by uh, uh, to be uh, the pus. We should make a puncture under local anesthesia, a puncture with a needle, and have some aspirates. This is me. We, uh, we send it directly to the laboratory to t to test it for a direct gram stain uh, examination and do sensitive culture and sensitive tests. 
sensitivity tests. Uh, it's usually, it's more than 60% of cases, it's positive. Uh, but blood culture, usually we, we do this investigation, we do, we do this analysis uh, in children, uh, especially at the peak of the temperature. Uh, when, we ha when we have high temperature and it's periodic high temperature, we take the blood sample at the peak of the temperature where we have a high load of germs in the bloodstream. Other um, other investigations as the CRP, white blood cells, ESR, ASLO in some kind of infections with streptococcus and uh, low hemoglobin levels, especially in children, all of them indicate usually uh, to the uh, to have an infectious status at, uh, in, in this person or in this patient. And they are very important to monitor the uh, inflammatory response and the infectious status of the patient. We should know that if we discover an unusual site, infection in unusual sites, it's not common site, and unusual organisms as Salmonella, Pseudomonas, fungi, we should suspect the, the presence of unusual patients. That is either heroin addicted patient or uh, or immunosuppressed patient, or uh, a patient who have uh, who has a sickle cell uh, disease. So unusual organism, unusual site. We should suspect unusual patient. We we all we should always differentiate osteomyelitis from cellulitis, from acute separated arthritis or septic arthritis. It's very important because the treatment differ, differs. A streptococcus uh, necrotizing myositis, which is an emergency case, and should be treated in the emergency department and in the emergency operating room. Uh, acute rheumatism, uh, especially in children, and sickle cell crisis, uh, and Gaucher disease, uh, which may cause pseudoostitis. The guidelines of treatment of uh, for the treatment of uh, osteomyelitis, acute osteomyelitis. If we have suspicion, we have we suspect that this situation, this case is osteomyelitis, acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. First of all, we take our samples by as either aspiration, either by blood uh, blood uh, samples, and uh, we th send them to the laboratory and we ta we uh, take uh, blood tests. We make a blood test to, to investigate the infectious status of the patient, and we we, be, we uh, begin to, uh, the treatment immediately. If we have pus in the aspirate, we should, we go uh, directly to the operation room and we make a drainage to the to the abscess and we clean the uh, the area of infection uh, by uh, by the use of a lot of irrigation fluids and. Uh, we make some, as we will see uh, later, we make some holes in the, in the infected bone to decrease the pressure inside the, uh, the bone, the infection site, which will alleviate the pain and will uh, decrease the risk of uh, development of uh, bone death, of sequestral formation. Another uh, other measures which are very important is the separative measures as analgesia, uh, um, uh, good analgesia, analgesia, good uh, intravenous fluid, uh, especially uh, when we have exhausted patients and rest and make, uh, putting splints uh, and to begin the antibiotic directly. If we have an acute infection without the presence of uh, we discovered it without the presence, after the presence of or the development of pus, we can treat it only by antibiotics and it will be cured. But if we have pus, we always should go to the, uh, the operation room and uh, evacuate this pus and clean the area. Antibiotic treatment plan uh, begins with the IV fluids, uh, IV, sorry, of IV intravenous antibiotics according to the uh, general chart, according to the, the most probable agent or most probable organism. After 24 hours, we change the antibiotic, uh, uh, antibiotic therapy uh, according to the sensitivity tests. And we continue intravenously up to two to four weeks. 
till the, uh, the, uh, the till the, the normal uh, the blood level uh, the uh, in, uh, investigation uh, the laboratory findings becomes normal only normal and the general health general condition improves of the patient improves then we change to the uh, uh, oral antibiotics per os for three uh, to six weeks, and we got, we uh, monitor uh, in this area in this period. We monitor the MIC minimal, minimal inhibitory concentration and um, the uh, blood analysis and blood uh, uh, indicators of if, uh, of inflammation that the CRP, SR, and white blood cells. We stop the treatment when everything becomes normal clinically and. Uh, in our investigations and, and laboratory findings. Uh, usually we have charts, we have the sensibility, sensibility, sensibility of, the, uh, of the germs to the antibiotics. They differ from time to time, from period to period, because of the, the widespread um, the use of uh, antibiotics, especially in the nut uh, if they are the, um, done in a random um, basis and uh, not according to the um, to the rules, antibiotherapy rules, we may uh, have some resistance. So this chart may change from time to time. But uh, this is to, uh, this uh, this table uh, shows us um, the most. Usually, what is the most uh, suitable uh, antibiotic according to the um, uh, according to the germ, uh, which is uh, indicated in this uh, in the table? But it's not fixed; it may change from time to time. So we can have an idea, only an idea. The surgical treatment, as we have said, we should uh, we should always do the surgery to evacuate the, uh, the pus and to make a hole, a hole and drain the abscess from the intra uh, inside the bone. And we, uh, we, put, uh, we close the wound, and we, we, uh, we put a drain, and we, we make a splint to, uh, uh, to relieve the pain of the patient. The complications of uh, acute uh, septic, uh, septic osteomyelitis are numerous as septicemia, as epiphyseal damage, uh, especially in children, as a metastatic infection uh, to, other, to remote sites, to the wide, uh, uh, other sites, pathological fractures because, um, uh, uh, because the weakness of the bone, and uh, uh, the development of chronic osteomyelitis, which is very, very important idea.